the rates for diabetes and obesity are exploding. And the reason is as easy as pie. To help understand why things like diabetes and obesity are increasing so dramatically now, uh, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about pie. Because, well, my, I like pie. Um, in fact, I like pie better than I like cake or cookies or any of the rest of them, but that's not important. What I want you to do is I want you to think about pie. And if you wanted pie right now, uh, what would you do? For most of us, if we had a sudden craving that we just couldn't get rid of, we would go to the store. And if we went there, there'd be a wide variety of things for us to choose from. Um, perhaps freshly baked pies in the bakery department or something from the freezer section or any number of options. Well, the ability to do this is actually a pretty contemporary thing. Not five or six decades ago, if you wanted pie, then you would still go to the store, but you would go to the store and you would buy flour and sugar and butter and fruit and you would come home and you would spend hours like literally hours making a pie which is why almost nobody did it except for things like Christmas and Thanksgiving and your birthday that was the only time you could invest the amount of time and energy it took to have a fresh home-baked pie today you just go to the store and you can buy something that at least approximates pie um, and I bought this one for less than a dollar. Less than a dollar! Something that would take you hours and hours and hours before can now be purchased for just a few bucks. Well, this is a fundamental shift in how human beings eat and how human beings access food. <clears throat> Up until really right before World War II, getting food for the most part was pretty difficult and expensive. For all of human history, up until only very recently, most people did nothing but work to grow, produce, and provide food. And even then, almost never did we actually get as much food as we needed. Now it's true, like back in the Middle Ages, people actually ate more calories than we do today on average but they also did much more labor-intensive work, so they were burning way more calories. In fact, most people still didn't get all the calories they needed uh, for the work that they were doing. So for the most part, at this time, people were one, a lot shorter um, than we are now, um, but also a lot thinner than we are now. This is the world that our bodies are built to live in but it's not the world that most of us live in today. And in fact, today, even though we eat less calories in total, we actually eat about 150% of what we need. And we all live in bodies that are built to take all those extra calories and store them away in case tomorrow there's not enough. So our access to food and to calories is so much better than it's ever been. And our access to things like sugar, and especially refined sugars, is so much higher than it's ever been. The truth is our bodies have never been particularly good at processing sugar, but they've also just never had to do it in the way that they have to do it now. Now add to this that our economy is transitioning and fewer and fewer of us are working in jobs that require a lot of labor. Instead, we're in service jobs, we're in office jobs, we're in tech jobs, we're sitting behind desks or we're standing very still for most of the day. And again, we just simply weren't made to do this. We were made to move, we were made to lift and heavy things, um, we were made to do hard work. And we just live in a world that no longer requires most of us to do those sorts of things. No. Don't get me wrong, all the progress that comes with this is great. It is wonderful that we can grow as much food as we can um, to feed people as well as we can. It's wonderful the kind of progress that things like technology has brought us. It's good that people aren't getting injured on the job um, and that the hardest and most dangerous jobs are now being taken over by machines and robots. All that's great, but we shouldn't be surprised when it also comes with some consequences. The consequences is we live in bodies that are perfectly tuned and adapted 
to a world that no longer exists. And it takes time, a lot of time, for our bodies to catch up with the new realities. So if you're struggling, if you're struggling like I'm struggling, to figure out how to balance the food and the exercise and everything, when we live in a world that is just designed to tempt us into eating way more than we should, tempt us into doing way less activity than we should, then trust me, I understand. And know that you're not alone. And that really is the most important thing. We all need to be in this together if we're gonna figure out where do we go from here. Hi there everybody, Jeremy here. How about go ahead and clicking subscribe below so that you will be aware anytime there's a new video. Also, while 30 million people have diabetes, really a lot of us don't talk about it, which could leave us feeling alone or isolated. So to reach out to those folks, how about clicking share on Facebook or Twitter? You never know who's out there who might really appreciate it. Thanks.